Now, United States President Barack Obama is meeting today in New York with African heads of state on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly session. This as Mr. Obama and more than 100 other world leaders meet separately in an effort to jumpstart negotiations on a new global polit climate treaty. VOA's Margaret Bashir reports on that. Scientists say the Earth is changing and not for the better. Glaciers are melting too fast, sea levels are rising, and severe weather is more frequent, with floods or drought affecting crops and livestock. The scientists say the outlook could be bleak for future generations unless the rate of global warming slows down significantly. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon saw the problem up close on his recent visit to the Arctic. Standing on the Arctic ice, I felt the immense power of nature, but at the same time, I felt a great sense of urgency as well as sense of vulnerability for our world because I have seen these glaciers were melting and glaciers were thinning and if we would not take any urgent action to stop this uh, for the uh, glacier melting, uh, scientists uh, wonder that by 2030, we may have a virtually ice-free uh, Arctic. The main culprit in global warming is the rising level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It is released through processes such as the burning of oil and coal and the chopping down of forests. Industry, modern agriculture and deforestation in all countries contribute to global warming, but many experts say China, the United States, Brazil and Indonesia are responsible for the most carbon emissions. The international community wants a new global climate treaty to reduce carbon emissions, and the hope is that negotiations could produce agreement at a meeting in Denmark's capital in December. The Secretary General is trying to give those negotiations a political boost by convening a climate change summit with 100 world leaders expected to attend as delegates gather for the UN General Assembly's annual debate. Andrew Deutz of the Nature Conservancy says the leaders must commit to serious greenhouse gas emission reductions. The target is at least 25 to 40 percent by the time they get to Copenhagen. What we want out of a deal in Copenhagen, as I said, if we want emissions reduction commitments among the wealthy countries of the world, we want the developing countries to agree to start reducing the growth of their emissions. They can't continue to grow their emissions at the rate that they have, but we still want their economies to grow as fast as they can. The UN is seeking reduced emissions in ways to give developing countries financial and technological help so they can adapt to the impact of climate change. But that won't be cheap. The United Nations and others estimate it could cost $400 billion to $600 billion a year. That sounds like a really big number until you look at what the stimulus package cost in the United States, until you look at what we spent to bail out AIG. And we were, the stimulus package, or the first bailout, was $700 billion. So dealing with climate change in all the 130 developing countries around the world every year costs less than what we, we spent to bail out Wall Street. While negotiators work to hash out a deal by December, the Secretary General says we can all do our part to help the Earth. He told VOA that small lifestyle changes can make a difference, and he is practicing what he preaches. Wherever I traveled, wherever I stayed, I have been always turning off lights and I have been using very sparingly this water and I have been minimizing my uh, carbon footprint and I'm really trying to lead by example myself. The Secretary General says it is urgent that the international community come together to seal the deal in Copenhagen because the planet cannot wait. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, the United Nations. Joining us now from the United Nations is VOA UN correspondent Margaret Bashir. Margaret, welcome to the show. Thanks, Vincent. Good morning. Good morning. Now, the U.S. is said to be one of the four countries that are leading in the emission of, uh, uh, the, of carbon emission worldwide. And uh, the rest of the world is saying, well, uh, the U.S. needs to show leadership if we're going to arrive at a global uh, climate treaty. Today, the president addressed uh, the leaders on that issue. Tell us, what did the president tell them? 
Well, he said basically we're all in this together, and we have to, um, you know, save the planet for future generations. And he said that we will all suffer the effects of climate change. Uh, he said Copenhagen should really be a significant step forward. But he said the agreement shouldn't just be about greenhouse gas emissions, about cutting those emissions. He said it should be about sustainable growth for uh, countries to grow and to develop their uh, standards of living. Now, in your assessment, do you think uh, he did address the concerns of countries like India that uh, feel that uh, uh, carbon, uh, carbon production will affect their industrial development and growth? Well, I don't know that he addressed any particular country's concern, but he gave a general statement saying the United States is committed to, to negotiating a global climate treaty. And, you know, we need to be in the forefront on that because the rest of the world is waiting to see what we're going to do. And he kept saying it's a new era, you know, so I think we can expect some change. So in other words, there was nothing very specific, uh, although we know the European Union is uh, providing or uh, prom promising incentives to the developing countries in order for them to implement some of those uh, proposals. No, there were no specifics in this speech, but I really don't think anyone was expecting any. This summit is really about uh, pushing political will and getting some momentum behind the talks in Copenhagen that are going to take place in December. So you have all these heads of state here who can kind of expand the negotiating parameters for their negotiators on the ground in Copenhagen. So uh, I don't think we were expecting any particular commitments today from the United States. Uh, so what's ahead after this? Oh, it's a busy week, Vincent. Uh, this afternoon, the president is hosting a luncheon for sub-Saharan uh, heads of state and government. They're going to talk about social and economic development. Uh, that's President Obama, sorry. And uh, tomorrow, all the heads of state will begin their speeches in the General Assembly uh, at the annual debate. So we have President Obama tomorrow speaking again. We also have uh, several other presidents. We have President Gaddafi, who's the head of the... Um, African countries this year. He's going to be speaking, so it'll be interesting to, to see his speech. Uh, we have President Ahmadinejad of Iran tomorrow afternoon, so it's a busy day tomorrow. On Thursday, uh, President Obama, this month the United States is president of the Security Council, and President Obama is going to host a meeting as president of the Security Council on nuclear disarmament and uh, nuclear nonproliferation. So there are a lot of things going on, many bilateral and trilateral meetings on the sidelines among world leaders. It's the, you know, the club of world leaders is here this week, and they're going to make the most of it. Well, thank you very much, uh, Margaret. Uh, Thanks, is... Vincent. Stay, stay tuned to VOA. We'll have all the coverage <laughs> for you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, Margaret Bashir, uh, VOA correspondent at the UN in New York.